Have you noticed how using pre-built actions in Pipedream feature these fields to accept your input? Well, you've been using props without even realizing it. We're going to learn how to use these same props within our custom Node.js code steps. This will make them more composable, more flexible, and more user-friendly. All right, let's begin by making our first ever user input prop in a Node.js code step. You can see here I have a trigger that has a event that contains a body with uh, customer data, name, and email. I'm going to add a new code step to this workflow by clicking the plus button, selecting node, and just running the node code option. At the very top, you'll see we have a defined component structure that I covered in the last video. And between the run function and the defined component lines, we'll create a brand new props definition that is an object. Within props, we can define our individual props. And you notice it's an object and the keys of the object are the names of our props. So we're going to play with the email address property from our trigger. I'm going to call this prop an email. And since emails are text, the type is a string. And that's it. We just created our first prop. Now, how do we get to generate that fancy field that we see from pre-built actions? Well, near the top bar, you'll see a refresh fields button. We can just click this button and this will generate our prop. So you can see at the very top, it created a field, a visual representation of our prop that accepts input from prior steps. So the refresh fields button doesn't actually call the run function within our component. It simply reads the props and then generates the fields from them. Now the field generated has the same object explorer you'd expect from a pre-built action. So we can click on this field and we can see the full object explorer and see all of these step exports from our prior steps. I'm gonna search for email and find it within our trigger. Here you can see under the body there's an email property and I'll select the path. And now we've just connected our trigger to our custom Node.js code step using step exports. There's even more options within props besides deciding the type of the prop. We can even change the label. So let's change the label to something more descriptive like customer email, for example. We'll click refresh fields again, and we can see the label change from email to customer email. We can even add a description. We'll add a quick description here that says the email address of the customer. Once again, we'll click refresh fields, and you can see it added a help text beneath the text box with our description. Now to make this a little bit more readable, I'm going to, I'm going to add new lines. Great, now we just clean it up a little bit. Now you may be wondering, We've passed the email into our step, but how do we consume the prop within our run function? Well, remember that the key is called email. All props are accessible under this scope. Here, we can say this email, and that will access the pro email prop that we've defined above. Let's console.log this so we can see it in our logs after we test this step. I'm gonna click test to perform the test. And under the logs section of our step, we can see that it logged the email address. And under inputs, we can see that the email address was inputted to the labeled customer email prop. Let's make this step a little bit more useful by returning a value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to split the email into parts. I'm gonna say the name and the domain name taken from the email prop and split on the at sign. So that way we can separate the two and then we can just return all of this as a object. So in that way, this particular component will actually be useful and it will split the domain and the name from the email address. We just ran it and we can look down here. We could see that it split the name and the domain from the email, and we can manipulate text this way. You can do more than just input text using props. You can actually input integers and booleans. Say we had a toggle. We could say type is a boolean, for example. We'll click refresh fields again, and it should generate a new prop that's a true or a false. You can use strings, booleans, integers, even objects. For a full list of all of the options of the components, check out our documentation at pipedream.com slash docs slash components. In our next episode, we're going to learn how to connect apps to our custom Node.js steps using props.